beneath the foothills of Colorado. A quiet valley is about to vanish. Soon, this entire stretch of land, thousands of acres of grass, rock, and winding dirt roads will be gone, swallowed up by millions of gallons of water. And here's the strangest part. It's not a natural disaster. It's intentional, engineered, funded, and decades in the making. It's called the Chimney Hollow Reservoir. And when it's finished, it'll become one of the largest water projects the U.S. has built in over 20 years. A lifeline for hundreds of thousands of people in Colorado's front range. But the deeper you go into this project, the more questions start to surface. Why flood a valley? What does it mean for the people and the wildlife that used to call it home? And how do you even begin to build something this massive in a landscape that's constantly fighting back? Because this isn't just a story about construction, it's about pressure, progress, and how far we'll go to make the impossible sustainable. Starting from the beginning, the history behind Chimney Hollow doesn't start with bulldozers or blueprints. It started with drought. For decades, Colorado's biggest problem wasn't space or growth, it was water. Most of the state's supply comes from snowmelt in the Rocky Mountains to the west, but nearly 80% of the population lives on the opposite side, east of the divide, in the rapidly growing Front Range. That meant millions of people relying on a water system stretched to its limits, one dry season away from crisis. By the early 2000s, city planners were sounding the alarm. The population was rising fast, but reservoirs were already full and the Colorado River was constantly getting lower. And the projections were grim. By 2050, northern Colorado's population was expected to double. Without a new source of water, communities like Loveland, Longmont, and Fort Collins would face severe shortages. So in 2004, officials began searching for a site that could bridge the gap somewhere large enough to hold nearly a billion gallons of water, but stable enough to survive the region's shifting terrain. They found it here, in a quiet valley west of Loveland, a 3,500-acre stretch of land once owned by Hewlett-Packard, who had planned to build a retreat center before abandoning the idea. Kind of crazy to think that this could have been a retreat, but instead will be an entire lake. To most people, it was just empty land, a quiet, forgettable patch of dirt and sagebrush. But to engineers, it was the perfect bowl, a natural cradle just waiting to be turned into a billion-gallon bathtub. It took nearly 20 years of environmental studies, legal challenges, and endless community debates before the first shovel finally broke ground in 2021. But when it did, it marked a turning point, not just for Colorado, but for the U.S., because this would become the largest dam project built in the country in over two decades. The mission store close to a million acre feet of water, enough to keep 12 growing communities and over half a million people running for decades. And once the plans were approved, the real question hit, all right, how do you flood a whole valley and make sure it doesn't drain back out? Well, it all began with an army of excavators carving through the foothills. Over 2 million cubic yards of soil and half a million cubic yards of rock were hauled away just to make room for the dam's foundation. That's enough material to fill more than 600 Olympic swimming pools, gone, just to prepare the ground for what would come next. Because when you're about to build something this massive, you need to clear a serious amount of space. At full size, the Chimney Hollow Dam will stretch over 3,700 feet long, longer than the Empire State Building laid on its side, and tower 350 feet high roughly the height of a 30-story skyscraper. When it's finished, the lake behind it will span two miles long, nearly a mile wide, and plunge to a depth of about 330 feet, as deep as the Statue of Liberty is tall. Most dams in the U.S. are built with compacted clay to hold back the water. But this time, there wasn't enough clay in the region to make that work. So engineers did something rare, something that's been done only once before in the entire country. They built it using a hydraulic asphalt core. Imagine a 350-foot-tall wall of rock and gravel, with a watertight spine made of asphalt and concrete running through its center, flexible enough to absorb pressure, yet tough enough to outlast generations. And that's not all. At the southern end, engineers added a 40-foot-high saddle dam. Think of it as a safety net, an extra barrier that ensures water stays exactly where it's supposed to. 
It's a design used in over 200 dams worldwide, but Chimney Hollow takes the crown as the largest ever built in North America. To keep everything watertight, they also built a grout curtain, a hidden underground wall created by pumping a mix of water and cement deep into the bedrock. It seals tiny cracks beneath the surface, because when you're holding back nearly a billion gallons of water, even a hairline leak is unacceptable. And then there's the spillway, the dam's built-in escape valve. When heavy rains or snow melt push the water level too high, it channels the overflow safely out, protecting the valley below from flooding. But the real marvel isn't just the dam itself, it's what's happening underneath it. A labyrinth of tunnels, valves, and pipes stretched for miles, connecting Chimney Hollow to a vast web of reservoirs and rivers. In total, nearly 2,000 feet of tunnels and 5,000 cubic yards of concrete were laid to link the system together, a hidden highway for water built beneath the Rockies. And when it's finished, this network will do something incredible. Move snowmelt from the western slopes of the Rockies through a chain of tunnels and power stations, before finally delivering it to this single man-made valley. A journey that spans mountains, rivers, and decades of planning. By the end of the year, that journey will end here, when engineers finally open the gates and begin to fill the reservoir, drop by drop. A process that will take three years to complete slowly flooding the valley until it becomes a brand new Colorado lake. But before the valley was destined to hold billions of gallons of water, it was something entirely different. A stretch of rugged land framed by pine forests, elk trails, and silence. Generations had hiked, camped, and hunted here long before the first bulldozer ever arrived. When the announcement came, reactions split fast. Some saw progress and hope for the future of the Mile High State, but others saw a mistake. That's the trade-off of a project like this, though. It's not just concrete and steel. It's sweat, noise, and human grit. Every day, hundreds of workers climb into the dust, drilling through rock that hasn't seen sunlight in a thousand years, reshaping a valley one shovel at a time. In the summer, temperatures here can push past 95 degrees Fahrenheit, baking the canyon floor and turning the air thick with heat and dust. In winter, the same valley drops below freezing, sometimes hitting single digits, as winds whip through the half-built dam, biting at exposed steel and stone. Each cubic yard of rock and asphalt is a story of human effort, the kind that doesn't make headlines but makes history truck drivers hauling 60-ton loads of granite up narrow switchbacks, engineers checking temperature sensors buried deep inside the dam's core, welders standing knee-deep in freezing water to seal off a temporary tunnel before sunrise. It's a project that demands precision, but it's also one that demands grit. And then there's the other side of the story, the wildlife that once called this valley home. Before construction began, teams of biologists and environmental planners spent years mapping migration routes and nesting areas, working to relocate or protect as much as possible. Elk herds were tracked and redirected to nearby preserves. Crews replanted thousands of native trees and grasses on the surrounding slopes, creating buffer zones for returning species once the water settles. Even the reservoir's edges are being shaped with care designed to mimic natural shorelines so birds and fish can adapt more easily when the valley becomes a lake. Because while this project is about delivering water to people, it's also about proving that development and nature don't have to be enemies. When Chimney Hollow finally fills, it won't just be another lake on a map. It'll be a statement. Proof that when the world starts running low on water, people don't back down, they start digging. But here's the thing. Progress like this always comes with a trade-off. You can't flood a valley without drowning a little bit of history, too. With the trajectory Colorado is on, though, it wasn't really a choice. It was either build a new lake from scratch or watch drought keep tightening its grip year after year. That's what makes this project as necessary as it is bold. When it's finished, this man-made lake will hold nearly a billion gallons of water, enough to sustain 12 communities and nearly half a million people across northern Colorado. And what's crazy is how it all connects. Snow that melts hundreds of miles away in the Rockies will travel through tunnels, across mountains, and end up right here, in the valley that once sat dry and forgotten. A place that used to echo with wind and silence, now becoming a heartbeat for half the state. Because when you really think about it, 
The Chimney Hollow project isn't just filling a valley, it's filling a gap between the past and the future. A past where the region's water supply was unpredictable and scarce, and a future where every drop will be measured, stored, and shared with precision. Of course, there's a cost. Flooding a valley means reshaping an entire landscape, turning what was once earth and forest into a man-made sea. But to many, that's the price of survival in a region where water means life, and running out simply isn't an option. So the next time you drive through Colorado's front range and see that shimmering expanse of water nestled between the hills, remember, it's not just a reservoir. It's the result of two decades of planning, billions in investment, and a gamble that the future can, in fact, be engineered. So, what do you think? Did the US make the right call flooding this valley to secure its future? Or should nature have been left untouched? Let us know your thoughts down below. And if you love exploring the hidden stories behind the world's most ambitious engineering projects, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and stay tuned.